These days we all have a lot of electronic devices that we take with us everywhere and that can be a real pain when traveling abroad because at some point we're going to have to plug something into the mains. There are two problems here, the voltage and the plugs. Fortunately, they're much less of a problem now than they used to be. First, voltage. The mains voltage is 220 volts in Europe, but in some countries, for example the United States, it's 110. And obviously, if you take something that's rated at 110 volts and plug it into a 220 volt power supply, you'll fry it. In the old days, this meant that you had to buy a transformer to convert the voltage. But that may not be necessary now because with increasing globalization, companies are trying to make products that will work in as many different countries as possible. And so modern devices will work with a whole range of voltages. Look on the power supply unit or the charger and it should tell you which voltages it will work with. If the voltage of the country you're going to is within that range, you don't need a transformer. Now that's voltage. Mains frequency can also differ. In Europe it's 50 Hz, but in some countries, again including the US, it's 60 Hz. This isn't usually a problem with one exception, anything with an AC motor. For travelers that means hair dryers. There's no good way to convert mains frequency. You would need a particularly expensive type of uninterruptible power supply and you really don't want to be dragging that around with you. But if you run an AC motor on the wrong frequency, it's quite likely to burn out. It may not happen instantly, but sooner or later it's probably going to stop working. So if you're visiting a country with a different mains frequency than yours, you're going to have to leave your hairdryer behind. Most hotels will provide a hairdryer for your use. Some budget hotels don't have hairdryers in the room, but you may be able to borrow one from reception, either for a small fee or a deposit. This isn't an issue with electric shavers, because they have DC motors. Well, then there's the issue with the plugs, because they can differ from country to country. This is the type of plug that's used in most, but not all, European countries. This is the type of plug that's used in Britain and Ireland. And this, this is a North American plug. You'll usually need an adapter. This, for example, is an adapter for an American two-pin plug. The plug goes in here and then you can plug it into a German wall socket. But you may not need quite so many. Sometimes when you buy a device, you get several different plugs and you should keep them if you think you're ever going to travel abroad. For example, smartphones use USB chargers. Now this is the charger that came with my phone and it's got a two pin European plug on it, which I can't use in Britain. But when I bought my audio recorder, it came with this USB charger. And the thing about this charger is that I can actually remove the pins and I can replace it with this. And now I can use it to charge my phone in Britain. It's also worth remembering that hotels are now beginning to provide USB ports specifically for phone chargers. You shouldn't rely on that though because not all hotels have them yet. Larger items like laptops come with a power supply unit rather like this. Now this has an American plug so I can't use it here in Germany. This power supply unit has a cable which goes to the laptop, that won't come out, but the power cable will. And this connector is an international standard, which means that I can take this German cable, plug it in, and hey presto. But that's not all, because one device that I bought came with two cables, one German and one British. And this means that if I visit my family and I want to take my laptop, hey presto. So there it is. You probably don't need a transformer, but you're quite likely to need some adapters, but they're not too expensive. But leave your hairdryer at home. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. 
Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.